Okay, my name is Norma Caballero Lopez, and I was born in Dinuba, California, a long time ago. I'm currently living in Oregon now, in, in Aloha. I work at Volunteers of America, home free right now. It's a small organization, but we serve a lot of women. My work is very, very important, you know, to me and to other people that I work with. I think that it's important because a lot of times we don't know what domestic violence is. If you're being hit or slapped or cussed at or humiliated, you know, a lot of times women don't know. They think it's just normal. And uh, I think that we, we need to educate not only the adults, but also the children and especially the teenagers who are growing up and going through this too. mother. Her name is Dolores Murillo and her married name is Caballero. My mother was born in, in um, the Union Durango and then my father Miguel Zamudio Caballero and my father was born in just a little town next to hers called Oizaba Durango. They went around for about a year and then they um, got married. So that year after they got married my father he used to be a bracero My mother went with my father to to the camp where the Braceros lived. My mother was already pregnant at that time, and so he, he crossed her over the river in a, in a inner tube. They were like, my father and my mother were like the last ones, I think, because my mother was going to have her baby at that time, so they, they stayed longer. An agent, I think it was an immigration agent, or someone came knocking all the doors to make sure that everybody was gone. And then he came to mom, to my father's little cabin, knocked on the door, my mother opened the door, and he says, you guys are in trouble, you guys have to leave right now. My oldest sister was born at that time, so she started crying, a little, tiny little infant crying, and so he says, is that a baby crying? And he, they, my father said, yes, it's my, our daughter. And so the agent said, well, you know, she's a U.S. citizen, you cannot take her to Mexico. And so kind of, my father and my mother were kind of scared. They thought they were going to take her away from them. But instead he said, tomorrow come to my office or you're going to be deported. And so uh, they did. They were afraid, but still they went. And they waited a long time at, the, at, the, at their office. But finally they called him in. They talked to him, to both my mother and my father. And by the time the day was over, they had their green card. Not their temporary, not their residency, nothing like that, just the actual green card. And so that, since then, my father and my mother have been here in the United States, and we were all born here in the United States. I think we left Cutler area when I was, I think, uh, I went to kindergarten there, so I must have been like six years old when we moved to Hillsburg another place probably about a few hundred miles away and we lived there for gosh till I was um, 15 years old it must have been like 1968 when we stayed here being a farm worker we lived at um, at uh, migrant camps when they recruited us to come to Oregon to work at in the, for, in the camps, they told us, come to Oregon, you know, you're going to have a big house with a white picket fence and a real beautiful backyard. And so a bunch of people, we all came and we got, and they took us way up in the mountains and we came to our beautiful place, which was like probably about a hundred little cabins, like the size of a bedroom, hundreds of them all in a row. And the little picket fence was just a barbed wire fence all around the, all around the, the camp and stuff. We had to wake up really early in the morning at four o'clock in the morning to be at work at five, five thirty. And so all, everybody had to be at the fields at that time. And if you were late, they would close it and you couldn't come in anymore. And if you made it on time, you were you couldn't work, but you couldn't get out until they opened the fence, which was about seven o'clock in the evening. You know, so just going through that that um, through that experience and then being around that environment, you know, it just made you I guess made you um, appreciate what you have, you know, who you are, 
your parents and stuff and friendship. Who I am is always going to be a mother and the best part of being a grandmother, but I'm also, I'm a social worker. I work in domestic violence, helping survivors do what they have to do in order to become self-sufficient. Again, what I do usually with women is, uh, women is in, who is in domestic violence calls our hotline or something, they get referred to me. A lot of times, a lot of women who are trying to get out of the situation don't have anywhere to go, which is one of the barriers for them to leave. So fortunately, we have that, and we can help them get into a housing temporarily until they get a job and uh, earn enough money to take care of themselves and their kids. Uh, there was a job opening at the Community Action Shelter. And so I got a job there, just being in the front office and stuff. And then a job became available as a case manager for the homeless families. And so I got that position. And that's where I started really talking to the women about why are you homeless? You know, there's so many homeless women and stuff and just interviewing them all. And it's all the same thing. I, because I don't have nowhere to go, because my abusive, I believe in my abusive husband. So it all kind of like, it was like a puzzle that just came together, you know. And then after that, a job became, became available at, um, at a domestic violence program. Um, I've been working this kind of job for about 23 years. A long time ago, I didn't know this, but I think now I know that the reason that I'm in domestic violence and I find it interesting and I want to help survivors is because my mother was in domestic violence with my father. He was a very abusive person. He would come home drunk and he would, you know, abuse of her. We all knew it. I was five years old and one day he would, we were at mom, in mom's room, sitting on her bed. We heard the door slam closed and then my mom says, hurry, hurry, go to your rooms. And so everybody took off and I was just, I was frozen. I just I was scared so I froze and I didn't run. But I heard my father coming so I hid behind the drape. And then my father came in, of course, yelling and everything and I heard him slap her. And so um, I was terrified that really impacted me forever and ever to this day. I didn't know what domestic violence was in the first place for a long, long time, even though I had also gone through it uh, until later on working with the women and finding out why and what was being done to them and then kind of relating to them too, you know. And then finally I found out the word domestic violence. And that's when I really focused in on domestic violence, finding a job where I could help women survivors. I think that we all just need to value each other, you know, uh, who we are, where we come from, different places, and meet each other where we are, you know, and stuff. Whether it's white, Latino, black, or whatever other culture, for instance, being involved when uh, Sister Chavez was here, you know, um, being, getting involved with that. You don't have to just be Latina or, or be a farm worker to do, to uh, be involved in that. We're all the same. You know, we're all the same. We, you know, we all have our different sufferings. We all have our different problems, our different successes, and nobody's, nobody is better than anyone.